Welcome back to Bunny Bites, first and only podcast for everything Killer Bunnies. I'm your host, Matt. Unfortunately, co-host Mike is unable to join us, but we have honorary co-host Scott. Say hello, Scott. Hello. Hello, hello. everyone. <laughs> you might recognize Scott from the Facebook group, perhaps, but yeah, we've been in communication a bit here and there. So I decided, hey, as long as Mike is gone, let's get Scott in. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> what else do we have today? Uh, so, some people you probably don't know. Let's see. Uh, who are they? Uh, Scott, do, who do we have? Well, we have Jeff and Jonathan from Creative Team Alpha. Oh, Creative Team Alpha. How's it going, Jeff? How's it going, Jonathan? Hi. Are, are we on? We are on. We're on. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? Scott, it's great to be uh, on a podcast with you, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I think the last time we spoke via audio was in like 2011. Really? <laughs> so yeah, okay. way way back, I had asked well, you. Well, I know we've exchanged a few. And, yeah. yeah, we've exchanged a few texts, and and send my regards to Ashley. And oh, thank how, you. How are things going up there in Idaho? Very well. Yeah, definitely different than uh, being in Chicago recently. So or, we're getting used San to the Diego. change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for asking about that. That's really nice. Hey, no worries. I know that. It, well, you're you're a suburb of Boise. You in a you live in a suburb of Boise, right? Yep. Okay, and you're you're probably right off what local road fifty two, which attaches to the interstate eighty four. Close. Yeah, yeah, pretty much right in that area. Yeah, I know that area. It's a great area. Very beautiful <laughs> in the summer. Never been there in the winter. And um, we've we've got an Idaho based Killer Bunnies card coming up. Ooh. Oh, exciting. Very exciting. I'm looking forward but, to that. But we're not allowed to talk about that today, are hey, we? Hey, no problem. <laughs> not, not today. Uh, today we are talking about the upcoming, uh, I like to call them fundamental mechanics of the new booster, cake batter. More cake batter content. Everyone's very excited for cake batter, I am sure. So today yes. we're, we're going to be looking at the, the new type of bunny. I'm sure Jeff will have a lot to tell us about that. It looks to be an exciting one in my book. And there's a new there's a new type of bunny. Yeah, that's why I've been sold. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yes, I see it. There it is. Okay. There it is. Right. And we have the also the atomic pastry is kind of like the the main feature of the cake batter deck, I suppose. So we'll look at both of those Agreed. today. Okay, so let's, let's get right into it. Uh, we'll start with the new type of bunny. Uh, we have the Cathexas bunnies. They they look pretty exciting. You want to tell us a little bit about them, Jeff? I, I would love to. So um, uh, let's see. Cake batter uh, features a new type of bunny. We've got one of each of the six primary colors. And, the, of course, the killer bunny order, blue, orange, yellow, and violet, and then red. And um, we've got one bunny of each, and each one of them is a different uh, parody drawing, which is really, really nice. But I think you want to ask me about the mechanics first. Yes. Yes. We'll so start with the mechanics, each, then we'll go to the references. Yes. Great. Each Cathexis bunny has psychic powers. Okay. So within that psychicness, let's say you have the blue Cathexis bunny and you play it into the bunny circle. All of the blue bunnies in the bunny circle then become yours and you must position them next to the Cathexis bunny so that all the blues form one big solid blue block. So it's a great way of stealing other people's bunnies. My mind was just blown. <laughs> yes, I was about to ask your thoughts on that, Scott. What do you think? Oh, wow. I had no idea. That is wonderful. Please continue. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anytime you want to jump in and say one of my ideas is wonderful, you feel free. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> so one of the balancing thing, uh, one of the balancing techniques in this game that, that's been difficult to maintain in new and unique ways throughout the years, and um, this is my uh, 32nd year working on Killer Bunnies, is to, um, is to make sure that the game is at least somewhat balanced and that nothing is forever. You could have a blue bunny with a halo or 12 horseshoes, or you could even have the super blue, but it's not forever because if you throw down a blue Cathexis bunny, all of the blue bunnies in the bunny circle become yours. 
Now, this is also one of the reasons why mechanically there are there there are only one of each color cathexis bunny, and uh, and so that there's no conflict. So they psychically project out and have all of the bunnies of their color come to them and join up in one big solid group. And if that wasn't enough of a feature, the next thing is that if you're if you're an aggressive player, you can actually attack another Cathexis bunny in the bunny circle. So for example, let's say my friend Carol has the orange Cathexis bunnies, uh, a bunny with the orange, um, I, I guess, entourage, and I've got the blue. On my turn, once per turn, I can initiate an attack and I can roll the 12-sided die that matches the bunny color. So again, the, the importance of a pawn is, is uh, not lost on me here. If you've got the blue pawn and you got the blue Cathexis bunny, you roll the die and then, uh, of course, my friend Carol would have to roll the orange die to defend. You get to add plus one for every bunny of the same color. So if I've got five blue, including my Cathexis, she's got only two orange. I add five to my die roll. She, she only adds two. And uh, the player with the lowest number has to discard their Cathexis bunny along with their entourage of the same color bunnies. Uh, of course, it's probably a good time to mention that half color bunnies are also in play here. Now that brings up an interesting uh, part. So first, the attacks. You can absolutely eliminate somebody and um, who has another Cathexis bunny, if you indeed have one. But let's talk about the half-color bunnies because there could be a conflict. There is a half-color bunny blue-orange. So where do his alliances fall? Does he fall with the blue or does he fall with the orange? And although this isn't specified in the bits because we can't go into every permutation, I know that you do on this show. <laughs> so, so I'm going to just, I'm going to save you an hour awesome. talking about Cathexis bunnies with Mikey. And um, I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is if I had put my blue Cathexis bunny into the bunny circle first, that blue orange would come to me. And if on the next turn, Carol put her bunny down, and it's orange, then it migrates over to her. So it's the last Cathexis bunny gets the tie. Okay, interesting. Scott, are you still there? Are you still amazed? Oh, I am. I'm speechless, Jeff. <laughs> well, what do you think? I'm coming up with ways in my head to like use this in strategies with my friends already. So. Yeah, this is, I think it's great because you can, I think you can do a lot of damage with this, but I really like what you said about there being a unique bunny because now you sort of put that into play amongst the other ones. And now we don't have this sort of cathexis ongoing thing all the time. I was going to ask you, you mentioned the blue super bunny. Yes. Um, so I would imagine that the, when the super bunny's in play, the cathexis bunny would uh, then be eliminated automatically. Is that correct? Does that still stand? He would never be able to reach the ground, so to speak. That's sort of the rule with the supers. Um, you flip it up, and then between the time your hand is up in the air and you're laying the card down, it disintegrates. So you're right. The super would actually never come over to a cathexis because there, there'd probably be no mechanic where yeah. the rules for super are suspended okay uh, yeah i just or, wanted to make sure that was the case however however that's a great idea and i'm writing that down maybe there, there will be a super you know suspension at some point in the future but um oh. never say never yeah so for there, sure there you go but one question that that has not been asked is what would happen if the blue cathexis owner and the orange cathexis owner in a battle rolled the same that Number. is a good oh, question. No. Okay. <laughs> what now, does happen? In kill, if there's nothing in the bits, you would just simply roll again and, and resolve the tie. But there is something in the bits, and it says both players get to keep their bunnies. Interesting. But they must, but they must each return a carrot 
to Kabbalah's market. Very interesting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm now, glad that's the, in the there. Next, because The next question is, what would happen if a player didn't have a carrot? That is a fair question. Normally, we'd assume they I... wouldn't lose anything. Return a bunny? <laughs> and that's what I would assume. But I like to keep a few rules flexible and open for people to interpret. But that would be my guess as well. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that's in there with the bits because I wouldn't have assumed that to be – well, obviously, I wouldn't have assumed that to be the standard clarification. I would have assumed if nothing was there, my natural assumption would be go to go to both of them dying. Rather than a uh, reroll, but but there are there are consistencies both ways, so it would have been had to be clarified either way, pretty much. But yes, <laughs> surviving well, Matthew, is an interesting way. Your instincts are very good because there are um, future decks coming up very soon, where individual battles between bunnies do end with death for a tie roll. So <laughs> there you uh, go. <laughs> so there you go. Your absolute your instincts are always good there, Matt. Very good. Yes, I, I'm pretty excited about this mechanic. Um, Scott stole my mechanical question. <laughs> well done, Scott. Oh, yeah, there you go. Sorry oh, about that. No, that, that's, that's perfect. That's a sign of good co-host, right? <laughs> Just don't take Mikey's deal. place, all right? <laughs> yeah, well, sorry, sorry, Mikey, in advance. <laughs> uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Oh, there, I thought of a situation where potentially the Cathexis could steal super, and that is if either the super has the halo and therefore its killing effect is no longer in play, or if That's the Cathexis bunny has a halo, and then I, I presume if it hasn't been clarified that the Cathexis effect is still in play if it has a halo, or would that be canceled as well, like the super? I do not think it would be canceled because you're not causing harm by, by moving a bunny. Right. So I would be okay with the that. The opponents yeah. might disagree, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Well, here's, a, here's a good question for you, Matthew. Can a super bunny have a halo? It can. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. It, I'm it, testing it. you. <laughs> but just as just as important of, as the mechanics um, uh, is, and, and uh, unfortunately, your your is your audience looking at the. Yes, they are. Bunnies? Yes, they are. Great. As long as well, they're on the YouTube, a... not on the audio podcast. But yes. Okay. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the artwork. Bunnies. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I like these artworks. Um, I'm not great with the references. Everyone knows that. But Jonathan, if you want to talk about uh, some of the, your inspirations here with these uh, these bunnies here. Oh, am I on now? Yes. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have Jonathan too. It's amazing. <laughs> Let's try. Um, well, you know, when, when we do the artwork, and when we come up with the parodies, it, it's kind of a, a, a group discussion between Jeff and I. Jeff always tells me that one of the funnest things that he, that we do together is coming up with the ideas for the designs, the initial designs for the cards. You know, he, he works uh, on creating the decks and coming up with the mechanics and then we sit down and, and before I even start drawing, we just come up with, hey, what, what does each card mean? What does each card do? Um, what is the inspiration for each one? And um, sometimes Jeff has a very specific idea of what he wants, um, an image to look like. Um, sometimes he has no idea what he he wants an image to look like he just has a cool name or um, a cool mechanic um, and then sometimes he's kind of somewhere in the middle um, we, we joke around sometimes that he tells me what he wants and then um, I tell him what he's gonna get um, <laughs> but more more than a few times <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but you know like um, I'm actually drawing as we're, as we're talking, and uh, I'm working on this card um, for Almond Crisp, and uh, he Tell wants the title. To, it's called um, Squid Sandwich. Interesting. <laughs> and so nice. obvious, obviously it's a person eating a squid sandwich, um, but he wanted it to reference somebody that he knows that he grew up with. And so he sent me pictures of the person, and so I'm making a, a, an illustrated version of that, that friend. 
Um, so there's references to that, and you know, sometimes it's like, hey, this is a reference to um, a movie, or this is a reference to a TV show, or this is a reference to a, um, a song or a lyric or things like that that I, I need to know, and then I have to go watch this horrible TV show that Jeff remembers from 1963 or something like that. Um, um, I've only had to listen to a couple of really weird ones. Um, or I have to read a book or, no, I haven't had to read a book, but, um, and, and then sometimes he just gives me creative freedom. It's like, go, you know, find out what's going on here. But with the Cathexas bunnies, you know, they're, the idea is that they're all uh, psychic and we wanted to do obviously parodies for these bunnies um and i gotta bring them up because i don't remember every single one of them with off memory kick better bring this deck up um so we were thinking about uh you know what are all the very popular um psychic um characters out there and the ones that we came up with are are across TV, movies, um, and uh, not just TV series, but some, oh, I don't know. We could talk about the blue one. He's not really a... He's late a, night TV. He's late That's night Carson, TV. Isn't it? That is Carson. Right. Yeah. The, the great so, Karnak. So um, we'll start with blue. So that is Johnny Carson. Uh, for the younger group, he was um, a late night TV show. <laughs> so he was replaced by uh, Jay Leno and is then replaced by uh, who's doing him now? Uh, is Wait, Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon, isn't it? Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon is doing it. Yeah. And um, Oh, let me see if I can figure this out real quickly using the interweb. Um, uh, how long did Johnny Carson host that show? Well, I'm ready to go on to the green one, though, Jonathan. Tell us about the green one. Um, well, you know who the green one is. Why don't you talk about the green one? <laughs> The green one is, uh, it's very rare, but occasionally we'll do a Star Trek reference. And, uh, <laughs> Every <laughs> once in a while. But what is all this laughing? We did the great Karnak. That was blue. That rhymes with Jarnak, which is one of the best cards in the deck. I won't uh, tell Mikey you said that. Mikey's not here, so we can say that. <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> Especially in a two-player game. That's oh, three play. players I've worse. I've done that. I've, I Jarnak my brother in a two-player game. It was, well, it was incredible. I didn't know that was a verb, but well done, Scott. And um, so we've got Troy, the psychic from Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, and then I think Jonathan's best one is the orange. Take it, take it, Jonathan. Uh, the orange is, actually, we're not quite sure if the orange is psychic or not. So um, the orange is a very short clip from um, a movie, Back to the Future, where Doc, Doc Brown is trying to be psychic. Um, it's when uh, uh, Marty McFly goes back to the future, or back to the past, meets Doc Brown, and he's trying to read his mind um, with that really crazy contraption on his head. Um, we're not quite sure if it ever worked. Well, according Probably to the Killer Bynes canon, it does now. <laughs> it does now, that's right. Yeah. According to Killer Bunnies, it does. And there's been a few Back to the Future references in the game over the years. Um, now, the yellow one is kind of a little challenge. The yellow one probably might be the most challenging one out of all. all. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have to say, I haven't looked at that one, and I'm like, I have no idea who that is. That's from the TV show Heroes. Hmm. I haven't seen it. <laughs> but yep, I'm uncultured. <laughs> Heroes was huge when it was out. Um, and this was a character uh, that played a police officer, and his power was obviously psychic. And he can actually wrap your mind and put you in a completely different world 
um, than uh, you you actually were in. And his uh, character's name was Matt Parkman, uh, played by Greg Gr Grunberg. I learned something new today. Very good. There you go. Uh, That's what money matches for. <laughs> he was a, he was a police officer. It was a really crazy um, uh, power because you didn't know what reality was after a while. It wasn't just like he could read your mind or make you do things, but he completely changed your reality. Wow. Um, it was it was a really powerful um, uh, power. So very cool. And then our Violet Bunny is from uh, another sci-fi reference. Um, uh, but this one, you've actually seen her symbol um, in one of our promo cards. And uh, she's, her partner or one of her uh, colleagues has appeared in several cards as well. Uh, she is from Babylon 5. And she's from the Psychor. Um, and this is a character named Talia. So she would have been um, related to one of the celebrity bunnies, Bester, and also the card Psychor, which is a uh, a side card. I love all the interconnected references within Killer Bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have to admit, for the red one, I didn't have an idea, and I let Jonathan go freestyle with it. And he took this character from Stranger Things, which I haven't seen, and um, which amazes a lot of people. But I had tried it, and it, it wasn't for me. And, uh, and then I got a lot of emails that said, try it again. And I, <laughs> I, I, I don't have that kind of time. But uh, who knows? I may, I may circle around and give it another try. So I don't know the character's name for the red one. Jonathan, would you? A lot of people who, ha who have seen it and are a little bit more hip than Jeff is, um, immediately know who this is, but this is yep. uh, Eleven uh, from Stranger Things. Um, I, who... I thought it was thirteen twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard number. Right. And, and uh, uh, yeah, we did her. This was kind of fun. I was thinking, should I put, have her holding waffles, or oh, that would have been great. Yeah. Should I have her bleeding um, out the nose? Oh, but the no, nose. No, no. We we couldn't do that. We couldn't do no, that. No, no. Actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but there uh, there is no blood in Killer Bunny. Yes, <laughs> lots of implied, but yeah. none. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, there are no. also no dead bunnies right. in Killer Bunny. So <laughs> that's account the Day of the Dead. Friend. The zombified bunnies. Well, yeah, they're zombies. That's different. And I would have preferred her holding the waffles, to be honest. But um, it's orange congenial is 11. Ah. Oh. Does that make this oh. orange congenial? <laughs> Maybe we should do a card that turns it into... No, nah, anyway, that's, that's a bit of a stretch. But that's I think so. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, uh, Scott. Which one do you like the best? Um, I my personal favorite is the is the Johnny Carson one because I'm a huge Office fan and in the Office Michael Scott does an impression of Johnny Carson. He does um, reading an envelope that he preloaded something just to impress the camera. So I immediately saw that and thought of Michael Scott. So that that's my favorite. But uh, Doc Brown definitely comes in a very very close second. So did you enjoy Angry Beat Farmer? I did absolutely. Yep. Good, good. I'll be re-watching The Office um, later this year, and who knows what references I'll, yeah. I'll pull. So I'm people very send glad me to hear stuff. that. I'm looking forward to it. I had oh. a fan send me an entire series, and she said, watch this and do something from this show. I don't want to say her name or the series, but it wasn't very good. But um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right, and, and Matt, which one do you like the best? I'm going to have to go with the red one because I can't wait to steal my opponent's red gleeful. <laughs> Excellent. I'm too uncultured to know the references too well. I, I know some of them, but I, I don't have enough nostalgia for the TV series and the movies to say, like, yes, I'm so glad that's in there. <laughs> Wonderful. And I've been instructed. I mean, my personal opinion is that they are all equally wonderful. Agreed. There you go. Did I say that right, Jonathan? 
<laughs> oh, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All Excellent. right. Excellent. Well, how about we move on to the second topic for today, which is the atomic pastries. As long as we're talking about artwork, I have to say, these are perhaps some of my favorite artworks in the entire full set. <laughs> They're oh. delicious. They, they, they just look absolutely delicious, and it just makes me so excited for them. Uh, can, can you tell us more about your inspiration behind drawing these pastries, uh, Jonathan? Because they look wonderful. Um... When we draw, the, so this one we originally debuted as a promo card before we even started working on the full deck. Um, so this came out, um, the deck, this was introduced the deck before in London. Um, when we introduced um, uh, the Coconut Vanilla Sponge. Um uh, as a uh, as a promo and i i asked jeff is like are we gonna draw real food or are we gonna draw food with faces and arms and legs and you know make it funny and make it you know animated and that's the conversation that we had and he says no let's draw real food um I was very you know, hungry at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and, you know, that was a big decision for us. It's like, are we going to make, you know, like cabbage has eyes and, and a mouth and water has eyes and a mouth and, and, and you know, our, our, our radish and our milk, you know, those have, you know, they don't have arms and legs, but they have an eyes and a mouth. And it's like, are we going to make our pastries? you know, animated, or are we going to make it more realistic? And, and if you go back, there's, there's the, the, the artwork that does, is very animated. You know, the, the bunnies have um, clothing, they have, um, they hop around, and we have the, char the, the other animated characters. And then there's the artwork that's a little bit more realistic. The mysterious places are very realistic. Um, the celebrity bunnies are a little bit more realistic. Um, and now the atomic pastries are a little bit more realistic. And, and so that's the decision that we went with. And um, I think my favorite one so far is the coconut vanilla, because I'm a huge coconut vanilla fan. Um, and so I actually had to design the card, not knowing what they did, not building the whole deck yet when I did coconut vanilla and then I had to mimic that and, and re reproduce it for the whole deck and uh, I just had real fun with it and yeah I got hungry d drawing it <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> hungry watching the pictures slide across the screen <laughs> over and over and um, so these were um, and Jeff could jump in here but these are all uh, pastries that Jeff has made and it's true um you know they're all kind of color coded and i decided to um they're all drawn for the most part there's a few that are did not because of the type of food they are did not lend themselves well but they're all drawn at the same angle with the same slice pull, um, pulled out at the same angle um a few of them are on plates um because of the type of dish they are um Oh, I do like the, the pineapple upside down cake. I love that dish too. Um, mm. And Jeff makes a good one. Uh, I do. <laughs> so Well, I'll, uh, I'll jump in on the origins of, of these. Uh, we wanted to have something to connect uh, to the uh, meditation money bunnies. Now, if you were at a tournament in the last few years, or you're a member of uh, the Bunny Circle on Facebook, or even a fan of Bunny Banter. You might have contacted me through um, Facebook Messenger um, and uh, gotten a free promo card. And some of the promo cards were Meditation Money Bunnies. Of course, any promo card will eventually be uh, you know, brought into and given a proper double Zeta number and, um, and put into a deck. But these bunnies were powerful because they allowed you not to spend money, but to actually get gather money they were worth one dollar at the beginning of every turn 
And so there had to be a counterbalance to them and they're related. Each one of those meditation money bunnies has a, a fruit on his shirt, which gives him a, basically a big target. So the atomic pastries were done in concert with the meditation money bunnies, even though they are not introduced in this deck there, they'll come into canon in <laughs> 2026. <laughs> long wait. <laughs> Sorry, but that's, <laughs> it's a long wait. Um, and uh, we're, we're certainly not used to waiting for a deck to come out here, are we? Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, no. Hey, it's always worth the wait, right? <laughs> it, we would hope so. So um, a good number of years ago, uh, I started baking and uh, I did only British recipes. Um, I, I live in London part of the year. And then I'm um, here in San Diego when the weather gets cold. And I, I learned to bake and it was a lot of fun. And for about 18 months, I was doing it really quite regularly. Um, and uh, all of the people that I knew gained weight um, because I would bake and then I would give the food away or have people over and, hey, try one of these and try what, what you, you've only had three desserts, try one more, you know? And it was just because <laughs> it, I was practicing and even when it doesn't come out good, it still tastes good, but uh, I honed my skills. And these really kind of represent my my favorite pastries, and there's eight of them in all. And uh, we're introduced to five of them, I believe, in, in the uh, cake batter deck. So we have a Bakewell tart, which is made traditionally with a peach jam. And Battenberg cake is uh, a cherry uh, type of cake uh, intertwined with a yellow. Uh, plum pudding is a classic. Uh, pineapple upside down cake, grandma's apple pie, is that five? I think that's, that's five. five. That's five. Uh, two more are coming in um, in the next booster deck, uh, which would be uh, radioactive robots. And then one more is coming in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they'll, they're, they're around. But um, anyway, that's the history of it. And they, are, they each have a fruit associated with them, each fruit for one color. Um, peach, cherry, plum, apples, green apples, and pineapple is our yellow representative. So, uh, we'll, we'll, and we'll have a few more trickling in, 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 in the weeks to come. Or uh, I should say the, the months to come. <laughs> Jonathan and I are pretty far ahead of cake batter right now. So, it's tough. <laughs> so what do they do? Let's talk about their mechanics because they do, they do look delicious. And, and, uh, my favorite of course is a Bakewell tart. I've made many of these. It's just a wonderful pastry, but let's talk about the mechanics now for a bit. So you, the one thing you'll notice when you get your cake batter booster deck is that there are no weapons, no funny weapons. It's all exploding pastry. And all of the atomic pastry are specials. So you can keep one in your hand and play it directly out of your hand, or you can play it and save it as a deterrent to show people that you have it. Um, this is going to be coming into play, I think, as the, the preferred use, because when you match two atomic pastry that are identical underneath a bunny, they explode. And you get to place them under a bunny. So if one Bakewell tart is already under a bunny and you're holding the other one, you can basically hold a bunny hostage because it's a fairly large explosion, 10 out of 12. And then adjacent bunnies also get hit with a little bit of the residual pastry at uh, level eight. Um, Jonathan had mentioned the uh, Victorian sponge, the coconut vanilla promo card. Again, it'll be wrapped in in, to, in 2025. But if you're lucky enough to have one, it'll explode any atomic pastry because it's white, so it's fairly universal. And the um, adjacents will get uh, hit with power nine. Uh, just for the record, um, the coconut vanilla Victorian sponge is a Star Trek reference. <laughs> Big surprise. More Star Trek? <laughs> it, it is, it, it, it's a Star Trek reference. Not many people get it, but it is a Star Trek reference. I'll, I'll let your, your audience figure out where and, and how. So uh, then there's the question of what about two atomic pastries that don't match? So if you have a bunny and it has a Bakewell tart underneath and I have a Battenberg cake, I can put it under the bunny and explode both of the atomic pastry at half power. 
which is a five out of 12. Not a terribly powerful weapon, but you never know. If you leave it under there, however, then you can't go back and explode it another turn. And it just sits there until somebody else comes along and places an atomic pastry. So you can actually gather up quite a few atomic pastries. And I imagine that the most powerful bunnies, like super bunnies, in the bunny circle will be the ones that are gathering up the pastry. Very interesting. I, I've I, left I, Scott <laughs> speechless, have I? Have I left Scott speechless again? No, I just, I love listening to sort of how you've come up with these different ideas. I do have one question on that since you mentioned one of each pastry. Absolutely. There seems to be sort of this player decision where they're deciding to explode these two different pastries or not. Is that same decision uh, present when two of the same pastry are present? No. Okay. If they're identical, they they go boom. It's automatic. Okay. Because that's the best. Automatic, absolutely. But if they're different, it is the player's decision. Okay. Yeah, I love this idea. The first time I ever saw these, I literally kind of imagined myself holding one plum pudding in one hand, holding the other plum pudding in the other hand, and smashing them together, and all of a sudden a mushroom cloud appears. So I think it's very meme worthy <laughs> this idea. So hats off to you. Thank you very much, and feel free to do that. I might also mention that if uh, a bunny is uh, – has atomic pastry uh, underneath it and is abducted by aliens. The aliens eat the atomic pastry and, and it's all gone. So I like bunny there modifiers. Go. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I'm very excited about this mechanic. Um, you know, somebody might wonder, you know, what's the odds of drawing two of them in the full set? And yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't think we'll very often see two of the same drawn. But I think it's within reason within a game of full set to see at least two of these drawn, probably different ones. Uh, so that's that's relevant, uh, where all of a sudden you have a save special that kills bunnies, potentially. And save specials that kill bunnies are pretty strong. You know, we think about cards like the Mad Baker from the starter set that has... Depending on conditions, usually a 50% chance to kill a bunny. 50% chance for it to benefit the opponent too, which is risky. Atomic Pastry, sure, you need two of them. But then you have a 5-4-4, four, four, and you have a chance to kill three bunnies if you're really lucky. But, you know, probably at least one of those is going to die. That's pretty good. Yes, uh, bunnies dying is kind of one of the main themes of the game, so I agree <laughs> with you on that. <laughs> but there are cards within the deck that allow you to pull atomic the draw pile yes so it's not simply a random uh flow especially if you have a larger set uh if it were me i'd play the blue yellow with just the cake batter and see how the mechanic goes there but in a larger game where you're putting multiple booster decks together there are cards designed within the deck that help you to pull out those atomic pastry and let's not forget these lemon squeezy yes yes yeah for sure there are cards that help find these um because some cards that are being printed within the set that we'll be discussing in a later episode but even aside from that we have cards like bakery rolls i believe from the caramel booster that draws flavor cards and these are all flavor cards so that's that's a nice way to search for them a little bit Exactly. Yeah. Bakery Rolls was the first use of the brown dye. Yes. And again, all the atomic pastry used the brown dye as well. And within this deck, we're also introducing the brown pawn, which will give you some advantage as well. Very true. What are your thoughts on the mechanics, Scott? You very excited? Absolutely. Um, I was going to like comment on, you know, you, I think your first mention of the, you know these being drawn in a full game set. While this is true, my sort of favorite part of playing Killer Bunnies in the full game set, and especially adding a booster, is this anticipation that, oh, will I see an Atomic Pastry this game? And so I think that building excitement makes pulling one and even playing one and using one effectively just this sort of epic memory that you share with those you play with. And I think, you know, even though the mechanic is really well, really well designed and and yeah, it's not as often as we might like, but I think that's part of the magic. And it seems to me that that Jeff and Jonathan have that fully in mind um, here. So uh, yeah, so very excited. Uh, take my money. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I completely Maybe. agree with Scott there, where uh, rare mechanics just make us want to draw them that much more and makes it that much more exciting. And at the very least, these mechanics are going to be less rare than the Bundle Grounds, am I right? <laughs> I have this feeling you, you hear bring that, that up. Jonathan. You, you hear that, Jonathan? We're magical, and and it's far uh, be it from Matt not to take a shot at the Bunderground again. Although, oh in goodness. all in all fairness, so as, since the release of Monday, I've played about a hundred games of full set. <laughs> not kidding. Uh, the Bundergrounds did something six times, but three of those times, I believe, it did win me that game. So there you go. They did something. <laughs> There you go. Every, every you time know, that's stealing the beauty. That's the beauty. <laughs> Absolutely. We celebrate those days. People, I do too. I do too. But a lot of people have written in and they've said, um, for instance, can we buy two cake batter decks and take out the atomic pastry and the bunnies and put them in our deck? And, you know, and again, I always say that that canon is one of each card, but I would never stop a player from saying, for instance, well, let's crack open another blue and put the bunnies in so there are more bunnies, or in this case, more pastry or something like that. I mean, that's completely up to you, and, and I would never address the what-ifs if we had two Cathexis bunnies of the same color. I, I don't want to address all those what-ifs, uh, but I'm very happy to hear anyone's house rules, or I, I'm interested to hear them. You never know. They, they may solve problems later on. So... As far as more atomic pastry go, there again, there's more coming, and uh, and who knows what the future will bring. But I did mention the meditation money bunnies earlier, and I wanted to follow up on that. So if I have a meditation money bunny with a peach on his shirt, and I put down even Bakewell tart, it will explode at full force. That's a big deal. <laughs> it is. The, uh, the meditation money bunnies have run rampant for two years now, and their time is over. <laughs> yep, that, that'll definitely be game-changing uh, for those groups that are already playing with the promo cards. Personally, my group doesn't play with the promos because we don't want to sort them out later once they get released into the quote-unquote canon. <laughs> but yes, that, that, I'm, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that will be quite relevant uh, for those playing already with the meditation money bunnies. And in some sense... You, there's there's ways you can play around that where maybe uh, you purposefully play a meditation money bunny on someone else so that you can play a full force atomic pastry and attack three of their bunnies. You know, th things like that could happen. <laughs> Indeed they can. Indeed they can. There are a few other nuggets in the cake batter deck. I just wanted to take a minute to mention just one of them, if that's okay with you, Matt. Sure, I don't um, have the picture up, but that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. I just wanted to mention for those folks who have written in and asked, uh, why there's only 10 underground stations when the when the red uh, die is 12 sided the last two are coming in cake batter very exciting i believe we'll be discussing the implications of that in an upcoming episode <laughs> fair that enough that should be exciting <laughs> all right all right i think that's everything for today we looked at Cathexis plans, we looked at Atomic Patients. I'm very excited about these core mechanics. I think they are going to be somewhat relevant in the full set. And somewhat relevant is good in my book, you know. Looking f forward to those rare opportunities that we get to celebrate, those rare moments in Killer Bunnies that we celebrate. Hey, I finally got to launch Atomic Patients at full force. Hey, I finally stole the Red Gleeful with my Cathexis. You know, things like that we always love. And of course, the artwork is always wonderful as well. Thank you, Scott, for co-hosting uh, co today in Mikey's place. I'm sure Mikey appreciates that. <laughs> thanks for thanks for having me. It's quite the honor. Yes, and thank you for to Jeff and Jonathan for joining us, of course, and discussing these cards. As oh, it's our pleasure to be on. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. As far as announcements, we will have two more upcoming cake batter uh, discussions. So watch out for those. Some very exciting cards. We got through some of the very exciting cards. But there's more exciting cards to go, you know, cards that interact with the atomic pastries and other exciting cards as well. <laughs> Everyone likes new cards. <laughs> All right. And there's no there's no end to the new cards. We just keep going. That's right. That's right. It might be slow sometimes, but it's worth the wait. <laughs> uh, I'm already two decks ahead, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan's just waiting for uh, Almond Crisp. <laughs> yeah. There you go. 
Oh, Jeff, you want to do the honors? Jonathan Bless. Jonathan Bless. Jonathan Bless. <laughs> the podcast. Bye, everyone. Changed. <laughs>